Yo. Is there anybody out there? Who's that peeking in my window? Ow. Nobody now. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to Cooking Jook, the show where we come by good food, good music. My name is, you can call me Yayo. My, my folks call me Yayo. Today, we're making something kind of simple, in my opinion. We are uh, getting some chicken leg quarters. I'm gonna make some rice with some beans, some spinach, I'm gonna mix it all in. And uh, should be fairly easy. It's a Wednesday night and I'm hungry. I fasted yesterday, but I want to eat something good. I haven't eaten all day. And, but I don't want to do a whole lot of work. So, yeah, chicken, rice, beans, spinach, mixed in, kind of, sort of, you'll see. Anyway, so let's get to marinating this chicken. Come take a trip with me. That's the chicken right there. Just a couple of leg quarters, nothing, nothing too crazy. All right, so we're gonna go about a tablespoon of lemon pepper. And this is a, uh, this has like low salt lemon pepper. And then we're gonna go uh, about three quarter tablespoon Obey. We're gonna let that do all the work. And mix it in. All right, olive oil. So what I wanna do is I wanna separate the skin from the meat. I'm trying to get trying to get up in there. So I wanna create like a little pocket. All right, we're gonna get some olive oil, throw some in there, do the same for the next one. Now if you can't do this, don't worry about it. It's just something I like to do. A little bit of olive oil. Sometimes I'll poke holes in the chicken and all that. I'll let this marinate overnight and all that. Like I said, it's Wednesday night. I don't have that kind of time. I'm hungry. Let's get some of the seasoning. Let's get it all up in there, up in right there. All right. Let's get some over here. I don't know if you can see us all up in there, all up on the inside. Sprinkle a little bit on the top over here. A little bit on the top. A little bit on the bottom. A little bit on the bottom. I might grab a little more. Let's see how, how much we can, uh, let's get a little more olive oil. Let's see how well, how good of a spread we can get on this. I don't want this to be well seasoned. I think, you know, most of the action is happening on the inside, but I also like for the outside to to have some nice visuals. So I definitely want there to be some seasoning on the outside. Now what I'll do is, if I think it has enough salt, I'll just throw like some pepper and like paprika on top. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe just a little more lemon pepper. Just a tad, just a little bit. That's it. Um, but I'm going to add, let me get some black pepper. That's gonna add some nice color to it. You know, you can pretty much go hard on this. All right, good to go there. Am not gonna add anything else? You see, I got some chili powder, cayenne, paprika, let's go. Paprika looks like it's spicy, but it's not. So you see all the that red, that nice, that nice red, red color. We're just gonna give us a little more massage. We're gonna show us some love. You're gonna tell her how beautiful it is. And you so pretty. Where you from? You from around here? Oh, oh, you from the west side? Okay, yeah, my grandma from the west side. No, I'm from. I grew up in the south. You know, it's all love though. It's all you know. I used to come out here, you know, for vacation and stuff. Anyway, so. Our chicken looks like it's good to go. And I'm gonna show you, you don't have to be afraid of raw chicken. Get in there. It's, it's, I'm not gonna tell you to taste this, but I grew up tasting. So shout out to everybody who, who's not afraid to, to taste the raw chicken. Growing up, 
when I was a kid, my mother used to season food, and I used to usually be like standing like right here, and I'm just watching, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I was the helper, and whatever she needed, I was there to do. So what she would do is, like I say, if she was marinating some chicken, she would get her finger, rub it on the chicken, and then she would turn to me, and I would just like open my mouth, and she would just, and I'll be like, oh, that's good, but that needs more. I think that's pretty good. Probably could add a little more salt, but I'm gonna chill. And let me get this off my hands. And I will say this, I've never gotten sick from, from doing that with chicken, from tasting the seasoning. So like I said, I'm not gonna tell you that you need to do that, but I do that. I ain't skirt. I'm gonna put this off to the side. Let me put this over here. And uh, we're gonna get started on, let's get started on the beans. So we're gonna get started on the beans. Well, first off, before we even do that, let me grab my cutting board real quick. One of like, I got way too many cutting boards. I'm gonna rinse this off real quick. Is it me or does like the detergent leave like, like an essence? <laughs> Even after the rinse, I still feel like, like I can smell the detergent and it's cool and everything, but I just, I don't know, I feel like I need to rinse it off. Um, I had a knife right here I was using before. Bam. All right. So let's see, I got some onions. In fact, before I even start chopping these, let me put a little bit of olive oil in this pot over here that we're gonna cook the beans in. Excuse the mess on my shirt. We cooking around here for real, for real. Bam, let's go. You don't have to give these a super fine chop. You really don't. Part of me wants to save some, some raw onions for later to put on top. I've always been a big fan of raw onions. Maybe we'll do that. We'll put these over here for now. All right. Got some garlic. Why, who, who, why garlic? Why, 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 why so messy? Why so many layers? Look, 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 look at this. This, 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 this. Come on. Come here some slack. Come on, bro. I, now I know why the vampire's like, yeah, I ain't messing with that garlic. It's not because of anything. It's just, it, it's, it's too much work. Vampires are lazy. <laughs> All right, anyway. Wednesday night, this is what we're doing. I hope everybody's having a good week so far. Regardless of what day of the week you're watching this video, I'm trying to think of what song to pair with this meal. Now, for those of you who are new to Cooking Jug, I know this is a fairly young channel at the moment. You know, growing, hopefully. I don't know, I haven't checked. But uh, what I do is, you know, I cook and then at the end of each video, I recommend a song to pair like so you know how typically like you know you go to dinner you know you can have like a wine pairing like oh you know i'm having the chateau brion i'm having the salmon or whatever and you know you ask you know what's a good wine pairing me i do song pairings instead so i want to pair this with a good song maybe think, well, what kind of music do you typically pair with, pair with your with your food you know i'll be you know, my, 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 my thing is, I, I'm a, let me wash my hands real quick. You know, I'm, I'm a hip hop head, but not every song is going to be hip hop. You know, I was trying to avoid that. Um, I'm kind of feeling like maybe some, maybe some neo soul. I don't know, maybe, part of me wants to taste this first 
and then see. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I got to think about it. Anyway, let's go back over here because we're about to get into the bean cooking part of the show. It's not happening there. It's happening over here. I should probably move this over here just so we can get close to the camera. Forgive my my, uh, my stove. It's kind of... My stove has had too much to drink. You see me tilted? I don't know, man. I paid way too much money for this apartment for my stove to be doing that. Let me move this over here. But anyway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some garlic in here, onions in here, roughly medium heat. Saute that for a little bit. I got some canned beans, nothing crazy. Cannellini, I got two different brands. <laughs> Cannellini white kidney beans one of my favorite beans you know i grew up you know I'm, I'm cuban and puerto rican grew up in miami eating all the all the white rice and the black beans and the red beans and the rice and peas you know my, my homie had to he still got it got the jamaican spot you know so i, I used to go get my my jerk chicken my oxtail my, my curry goat and rice and peas with the dumplings and all that stuff um and uh you know my other homie you know, he's uh, he's Haitian and his auntie made the, the Didi a Jean Jean, which is the black Haitian rice, which low key is like, might be my favorite rice dish, period. Like it, it's it's that good. Um, I actually wanna, wanna know how to make it. And, and I wanna send a shout out to my auntie Mori, cause I need you to show me how to make that. And uh, we gonna make that happen. And I love you and I miss you. And uh, let me see, you know, Puerto Rican, arroz con gandule, you know, that's, that's a staple. And then, you know, Cuban, red beans, or Puerto Rican, arroz con habichuela. So I grew up eating all the beans. But one of my favorite beans, though, cannellini, the white kidney bean. Just, I, I don't know, I, I can't really describe it, but it's just, it's just good. It just works. Like, it's, it's good on its own. Like, if, if you were, like, in a rough spot, like, you could literally just heat this up. You want to add a couple things, some salt or something, if it, you think it needs it, cool. But they just work. And... One of the few beans that I think is just as good by itself in like a stew, maybe with like, you know, some sausage or something, than just any other bean. All right, so this heat is eh, still kind of low. Let me bring it up to medium. And let me just get some essentials. I'm gonna get some pepper, some salt. I'm about done with that one. Um, and maybe some garlic and onion powder. You know some staples we'll just put these off to the side i may i may play around with those because obviously we have regular garlic and regular onions but sometimes you know a little bit a little boost uh, doesn't hurt and then i'm going to add in some cilantro and i'm going to just throw it in there and just let it all cook um normally i'd keep some cilantro fresh as like a like a garnish at the end but this is i think past its prime and i just want to get some use out of it before it goes bad so i'm gonna just dump that later on kind of like a little bouquet you don't need to tie it up because it cooks like into itself so you can easily like pull it off okay this is starting to heat up a little bit all right cool Ooh, whoop. all right let's get some garlic on in there you want to know a restaurant secret i heard i heard a chef told me this that restaurants always keep frozen onions nearby like there's always some frozen onions and what they'll do is and, and if you're a chef and if you're watching like confirm or deny let me know if, if this is complete bs um but high heat spatula by the way this is not a dollar store spatula get you a good spatula it's about eight nine bucks um because what happens is they they get the the onions and you throw them on you know into some oil and it starts to smell it's the aromatics so it makes people feel like oh man the food is coming it's gonna be bomb yada yada so there's always some like on deck it's almost like potpourri for restaurants and like i said if i'm wrong please correct me and if i'm right then show me some love in the comments please do that hit the like hit the sub all that stuff and i got some onions i'm gonna wait a little bit And then we're gonna throw the beans in here. We'll taste it later on. I don't plan on putting a, a whole lot. I, you know, I have low key. I'm thinking of putting, I have, I have a half a can of beef broth and I have a can of Chinese chicken broth. I'm thinking of maybe throwing the beef broth in there. Maybe, we'll see. It's one of those things where I'm like, 
I just want to see like what I have in the fridge and what I can get rid of. And it just so happens that that can of beef broth is something that I need to get rid of. Um, I'm not gonna need to do it tonight, but. All right, I'm gonna throw a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper in there. Let this go right now. I got the heat just under medium. Man, this, this garlic, garlic, am I right? I mean, garlic, garlic though, garlic though. I need to lift this up a little bit. Well, let me, let me just a little shy of that garlic. I know you want to see it. That's what we looking like. You see this? These are battle scars. You see that? That's how, that's how you know we cooking around here. You see that ring? We cook around here. It's cooking jug. We cook for real around here. We cook for real, for real. All right. Yeah, that's, that's better. All right, cool. All right, let me throw these uh, these onions in here. Muchas gracias. I've been listening. Speaking of, of, of juk. So for those of you who don't who don't know what cooking juk means, again, for, forgive my my inebriated stove that my stove is doing a wobble right now. <laughs> Let me get a little more olive oil in here. So cook and juk. Cook, obviously, cook. Juk, it's the music. It's the juk joint, or the juke joint. You think of a jukebox. But back in the day, I wanna say mainly in the South, but I could be wrong. Black folk, the cook, the juke joint was the spot. It was the kicking spot. It was the kickback. It was where you go to have fun. It was where you go to listen to music. You, where you, you might, you know, put some money in a jukebox and listen to music and dance. You know, it's so where you go to, you know, smoke a cigar. You go to gamble. You go to talk to girls. And it's, it was the, it was the club. You know, so that's what it's about. So it's food and music. I've been listening to a lot of jazz music lately. A lot of funk. Checking to see if I have any, do I have any bay leaves? I don't think so, no. Um, I've been listening to a lot of music from London. I might, you know what? We might need to do some London, some London music recommendations this time around. Cause London right now, in my opinion, and I'm recording this and I, and I don't wanna like, I want this to be like evergreen, but so I don't wanna like, you know, give it a date and a time, but I mean, it is what it is. But it's, it's uh, 2022. It's nearing the middle of the year, I'll just say that, because I may not post this video <laughs> right after I record it. But uh, in 2022, in my opinion, London is the funkiest city in the world. Killing it musically, and just all types of genres. And it's not anything new, it's not like they just got here. Like London's been around for decades. But I find my antenna being pointed in that direction more so than any other city in the world right now. More than hip hop from New York, Chicago, LA, Miami, Atlanta, I'm like, London town. Respect to the London Massive. Now now the hard part is trying to think like, well, what song do I pick? So anyway, I'm gonna let these sweat for a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna turn the oven on in a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I got I always have like something in the oven. Something that like I'm not using. Yo, if you use the oven as a storage, yo <laughs> drop a comment. Drop a, I got this heavy yo you know what's crazy when you see the cartoons you see the grandma holding the cast iron skillet like it weighs a half a pound this thing is heavy as hell <laughs> this thing is heavy as hell i want to meet a grandma who could pick one of these up and just like run around with it this is like look at that you 24 inch pythons brother damn this is yo this is no joke right all right, anyway, get you a cast iron pan if you don't have one. It's worth the trouble. It, it sucks cleaning it, but you should have one. Even if you don't use it all the time. I don't use this all the time, but honestly, I use this more for baking than anything else. I use it more as a baking dish. It's amazing. And uh, makes for...
I'm back, I'm back. I had, to, I had to go put that away. All right, so we got these things sweating. We got the computers puting. All right. Um, let me turn the oven on. About 375. We're gonna put the chicken in there for roughly 40 minutes. Roughly 40 minutes, 375. Sometimes I like to broil the chicken. The baking pan that I'm gonna use is not broiler friendly. So I'm not gonna do that. But also, when I bake it at like a 375, it's like, it, the, the, the skin is like, it's like kind of crispy a little bit, but not too much, but the inside is just ridiculous. It's, it's, it's just so moist and that's, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm going for. Plus when I broil, I kind of got to like watch it and make sure I don't burn it. So I, I'm not in a watching and don't burn mood. I like to just, I just want to let it go. So 40 minutes, 375, I'll check it in around the half, uh, I'll check in on it around the halfway point. And uh, yeah, and then we're gonna get this uh, some rice going, and we're gonna get. I got this little bit of parboiled rice, parboiled rice right here. Yeah, can you see that? So that's what we're gonna go with, and uh, yeah, I'll be right back. All right, so now we got the beans about to hit the pot. So, like I said, I may throw in some beef broth in here just because I have, happen to have some extra beef broth, not because it's part of what I typically do. I'm gonna raise the heat up a little bit, take it to about seven out of 10. Chew, but I'm the type of person that I always put a little bit of water and try to get the try to get the most out of the beans. Give me that. There we go. And we're gonna go tasting as it cooks. Not right now. Ooh, shoot, a whole lot more. And then we'll see, you know, what else we add whether it be onion powder, garlic powder, maybe, like I said, maybe I'll add in that, uh, come on now. Here we go. Maybe I'll add that, uh, that beef broth. I would use a Chinese chicken broth, but I want to use it for something else. It's so good. It's, it's, oh. If you ever get the opportunity to buy Chinese chicken broth, not, I'm not talking about regular, I mean Chinese. It's, Amazing, amazing. All right, you're gonna mix it in. I can already tell it's kind of thick. So we're probably gonna add some liquid in a little bit. I'm gonna taste it first. Let me grab a top for this. too much of a mess and some of the stuff that I've used is going to be really easy to clean that's a big deal to me and we got the oven going let's get some rice going now well let me give you a little peek at the beans just before we we go into the rice so this is what they look like now nothing crazy It's got a little garlic, onions, some pepper, and that's pretty much it. And we're gonna check those out probably in about the next 15 minutes or so. Next, we're gonna make some rice. I have some parboiled rice. Um, parboiled rice is like, in my opinion, the easiest rice to make. 
you can't mess up our boiled rice. If you mess up our boiled rice, we may need to have a discussion. It doesn't mean you can't cook, but it just means that maybe we need some training wheels or something. There's no shame in training wheels. Even though I th kind of feel like parboiled rice comes with training wheels. But anyway, so if you have ever made white rice and it comes out too mushy, and I'm not talking about parboiled, I, I mean like the regular long grain enriched white rice. If it's coming out too mushy, you're using too much water. And I don't know who came up with the, you should use one cup of rice and two cups of water. I don't know who came up with that. That's wrong in 99.9% .9 of the cases when it comes to white rice. Not brown rice, brown rice, depending on the rice, sometimes you can use two. Parboiled rice, you can use two cups. You can use the two to one ratio. Whenever I make white rice, it's always one to one and a half, max one and three quarters. So if it's one cup of rice, it's one and a half cups of water. Trust me, you, you're welcome. It doesn't have to be a cup cup, but whatever you're using, if, if you're using, if you're using one of these, if you're using a regular little glass, this was actually a candle, by the way, and uh, I repurposed it. But if you're cooking with one of these, rice, one and a half of these water, it'll work. If you're using one of these filled with rice, one and a half of these filled with water, the ratio doesn't change. You'll be fine. Trust me. All right, so we're going to do some parboiled rice. Um, I may give it a quick little rinse, then I'm going to uh, put a little olive oil, a little salt. I'm going to toast the rice. It kind of helps it from sticking, even though this rice is pretty good about not sticking, but I always like to toast my rice. So yeah, I'm going to give this a quick little rinse. Beans are beaning. All right. And we're going to see how much, let's measure how much. All right, I got a mug right here. So just so you have an idea of how much. Uh, water we're gonna use so I got boom just about a whole mug I know oh yeah oh yeah chico no fatigue alright so we got just about a mug alright so I'm gonna just put this here. So what I'm gonna do, one and a half of these, okay? I'm gonna give it a quick little rinse. You don't have to rinse it if you don't want to. I'm in a rinsing mood, even though I said I didn't want to do a lot, but I just, I, I wanna get some of the starch off just because I, I don't know, there's a pot full of starch right there, but anyway. All right. So I took out, so I took out most of the rice, not the rice, most of the water. I'm gonna put it here on the, the stove. I'm going to bring it to like about 8 out of 10. Olive oil. About 3 tablespoons. Give a little salt. This is almost, this is like, I don't even know how much, there's like almost no salt in here. Okay, that's, that's, pretty, much, that's pretty much done. I don't know if you can hear that. Let me put my mic close to it. I don't know if you can hear that. All right, so I'm gonna. Okay. Again, 1.5. And we're gonna wait until this really starts to make some noise. Like right now, nothing's happening. There's no noise, real quiet. Quiet before the storm. All right. Let's start putting some stuff away. I'm trying not to be. Come on. Oh, look. Not, not, not as I want to come. Round it. one. Fight. Man, what you talking about? Since when? That's ain't that bad old. Round two, fight. <laughs> Yo, I don't know who you think I am. Hey, bro, I'm from Dade County. Like, stop tripping. Final round, fight. Oh, 
You lose. Mm. All right, Perfect. Anyway. The rice is starting to rice. It's rising. Mm. Are the beans beaning? Really beaning. Starting to, they starting to bubble. It's gonna be trouble, trouble. And I'm gonna add something to this later. You're gonna see. All right. All right. So the, the rice is toasting up. I'm gonna let this go for like another minute and a half. Then I'm gonna add the water. One and a half coffee mugs of water with the uh, with the mustache. With the mustache coffee mug. Thank you, Kaz and Cassandra, for my gift. I appreciate it. I still have it after all these years. And we're gonna throw the chicken in the oven. Everything's gonna cook. This is gonna take about 20 minutes, and I'm gonna just let it rest. I'm gonna let this cook a little bit longer. All right, one and a half. All right. I drink a lot of tea in here, that's, that's why it's that color. Stir. We could add some more salt to this if you want to. You don't have to. You don't have to add any salt to it if you don't want to. But give that a little stir. I'm gonna bring that up to a boil. Let the computer start putin. All right. I'm gonna put this chicken in the oven. It's at 375. One thing I have embraced as I grow in my cooking journey, as I progress, is small cookware, smaller. Why? Well, one, I have no family. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm, I'm dolo, solo, dolo. No wife, no kids, ladies. And don't ask why, why, why you ain't married, why you ain't married. Because I'm not, because I'm not, okay? I'm not, all right? <laughs> Just haven't met her. But small cookware, less to, less to clean, less to clean. And uh, yeah, it works. I got a couple of small baking pans, love them. And uh, put these two lead quarters in here and I'm gonna let them do what they do. All right. I am going to spray a little bit of nonstick cooking spray. It says it's nonstick after a while. Eh, yeah, whatever. I don't think it necessarily needs it, but I'm just like, you know what? Let me let me give it a little boost. I'm gonna just you can spray some on the chicken too if you want. Oops. All right. In fact, I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom too. Just a little bit. Not a lot, baby girl, just a little bit. <laughs> Wanna hear a 50 cent story? <laughs> so, so back in the day, I used to own, I co-founded a hip hop magazine. One of the best times of my life. Unfortunately, it destroyed my friendship with my best friend. But we're cool now. But back in the day, we were trying to get interviews with a lot of big time, you know, rappers and stuff like that. And we, we, we got a few. We did all right. Considering we were just two dudes from Miami with a laptop. <clears throat> Eventually we got a little team of writers and stuff. That wasn't even a team of writers. It was me and like one other person. All right, so that, that water is, is watering. Get that little stir. Let me bring this down. Bring it down to about four out of 10. Yeah. 
Bean, beans and beans. Ooh, yes, sir. Ooh, that smells good. So back in the day, I had this magazine, this hip hop magazine. Me and, me and uh, one of my best friends. It was dope. I may be biased because I wrote most of the content and took most of the pictures. But it opened up a lot of doors for me. So in fact, I'm, I'm gonna wait a few minutes. I'm gonna wait, because dope experience, interviewed a bunch of people, ran through Miami. Just, it, it was almost like we had keys to the city in a way. It was, it was amazing. We were all up, all up in the mix, hanging out with this person and that person. We had managed to get an ad, excuse me, from G-Unit for, for Reebok when 50 had the sneaker. At the time we were giving away ad space because we were two nobodies and we just wanted to fill up our magazine with content. So it was like, yo, like we'll do free ads. <laughs> and we managed to get an ad from G-Unit, Reebok. I have no idea how, how we did it. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But we ended up going to New York for the day and we were literally just on Broadway in Manhattan, me, me and my homeboy. <laughs> I'll never forget. I'm from Miami, so me and the cold, yeah, we've met, but we don't know each other very well. I go to New York. I got on sweatpants, jeans. I may have, I may have some long johns under. I don't remember. I had like a t-shirt, a sweater, another shirt. I had a leather jacket, scully. I think I had gloves on. We fly into LaGuardia. We come outside, this before Uber, before Lyft, right? We in the line for the taxis. I'd never seen anything like that before. Like a line for taxis, never. So we in the line, I come out the airport, and I'm just like, oh, it ain't that bad. Mind you, I have 19 layers of clothes on. I'm like, oh, this ain't that bad. And then like six minutes pass by, and I'm just like, And then like another five minutes passed by and I was like, yo, I can't feel my face. I can't, I can't, I can't feel my face. I can't feel my face. I don't know what's happening. I had never experienced that kind of cold before. Now I understand why a lot of New Yorkers are just mad. I'd be mad too. If you walk outside the house and just winter just kicks you in the teeth like that. Men don't like that, men don't like. All right, so the rice is going. We're going to let that go for about 20 minutes. Let me set the timer on here. About 20 minutes on there. All right, we're good to go there. I'm going to put the cilantro in here. I need to rinse this off. That's not the end of my of my story. So we get to we get to New York. Forgive me if this is too loud. I'm gonna talk through it anyway. We get to New York. We have some meetings. We have some meetings with like a publicist at Interscope. Um, at the time, Fifty and G Unit, Game, they were all there. Not at the office, but but well, Fifty was there. But we had some meetings with some record labels. You know, we had like a brief meeting with Bad Boy. Um, we had a meeting with Sony. We went up to the Sony office. It was like on like the 43rd floor or somebody was like overlooking Manhattan. It was amazing. Um, and a, a friend of a friend who worked at Sony took us out to lunch. Nothing crazy. Just a little runaway spot. It may have been Olive Garden. <laughs> it was free. <laughs> I didn't know people in New York ate Olive Garden. But hey, I guess when you're on the clock, you know, you just, you just need sustenance. So we get to Interscope. We go up in there. It's cool. It's a cool office. They had like a little corner where they do photo shoots and stuff like that. It was interesting. I never, never really seen anything like that before. We met with this guy. We tried to secure some interviews. And it was kind of like, oh, all right, cool. Let's, let's, let's just keep talking, you know? Let's, like nothing really major came from that meeting. But still, it was cool. You know, I'd never been to New York. 
I still can't really say I've been been to New York because I just walked up and down Broadway all day. And when I tell you I never drank so much coffee in my life, because we would go to one block, we go into like a pizza shop or like a little corner store, a little bodega or whatever. Well, I don't know if there's any bodegas on, on Broadway, but you know, just anywhere we can get some coffee. And uh, we were drinking coffee, and by the time we got to the end of the block, the coffee was gone, but we were still so cold, we were going to another spot and grab some more coffee. So we just kept just drinking coffee on coffee on coffee. Let me give these a little taste. Alright, let me just... Not bad. I'm going to add some water. I'm going to add the beef broth. Normally, I would not add beef broth. If anything, I may add chicken broth, but I have this half a can that I just want to get rid of, to be honest, though. Nothing crazy, just regular beef broth from the store. Come on, now. Add a little bit of salt with the, with the beef broth. It definitely changed the color. Give you a little pee. Darkened up the broth a little bit. I'm gonna add some garlic powder. Onion powder. If you can only have three things in your kitchen, salt, pepper, onion powder, then garlic powder. Some people are like, no, garlic powder, you tripping. I said what I said. And I love garlic. If you can have four things, then garlic powder. Okay. All right. some salt to that later for now let's add the cilantro just like this I'm gonna put it over to like one side that's gonna cook down it's gonna wilt really quickly I'm gonna bring this up to about a six and then we'll check in on it in a few minutes all right rice is ricing we got about 15 minutes left. I'm gonna put the chicken in the oven. That's good. Like I said, it's gonna go in for about 40 minutes-ish. But like once this cooks, we're gonna let these cool down and chill. Personally, I think when you let the beans cool down a little bit, just kind of get to know each other. You know, it, it starts to thicken up a little bit. It, 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 it works. It helps. And then the rice, you can just leave it, turn it off. I may put it on the back burner just because the heat from the oven will keep it warm. And in the oven we go. As like I said, 375, about 40 minutes. Let me finish my quick G unit story. So, like I said, so we went to New York. We're having these meetings Interscope, Bad Boy, Sony. Um, in my opinion, people in New York, they were really nice. You know, I was expecting everybody to just be like, get out of my way, bye, Brooklyn, you know. But everybody was really cool. Everybody was really cool. Um, we go to Interscope, we talk to the publicist. I cannot remember his name for the life of me. And we used to talk all the time. And I remember seeing him like on like the Grammys. Forgive me if my mic is like rubbing up against my... 
My face. I remember seeing him at the Grammys. Well, let me let me let me restate that. I remember seeing him on TV on the red carpet at the Grammys. I was at the crib. <laughs> and uh um I talked to him, we had a meeting, and we went downstairs and we went to go catch a cab. And we got a cab, but before we got the cab, this black, there's like a black suburban or a Escalade, a Tahoe or something like that. And it's just posted up on the, the sidewalk. Not on the sidewalk, but you know, you know, it's posted up on the street. And we're waiting for our cab and we see 50 Cent. 50 Cent walking by with like three dudes. And I got this magazine, and I want to show him, like, yo, 50, like, yo, we have your ad in our magazine, just want to, you know, just want to make some kind of connection. And I'm, I'm going to see if I can find the magazine with the ad in there, because I, I have it somewhere in my life. It's over there. I need to go and look for it. If I can find it, I'll show it to you. If I can't find it, then you just have to take my word. And uh, I'll probably show it in another episode. But I go up to 50, like, yo, like, 50, yo, I just want to show you, like, we got your ad in this magazine, and he, and this big... <laughs> Oh, 50's maybe like an inch taller than me. Maybe, maybe. He might low-key be shorter than me. He's he's not, he's a stocky dude. He's not, he's not tall. Um, the guy who he was with, one of the guys who he was with, he was very tall. And this dude, I don't know if he was Russian or what, he, he sounded like his voice was like, you know, it's very, very like, no, like, do not, no, you know? And um, dude just gave me the stiff arm. I was like, yo, 50, were like, oh, 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 okay. All right, all right. God dang, that, that hurt. <laughs> but yeah, he just got up in the whip and he left. And uh, yeah, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. I ain't no, I ain't no punk. I ain't no punk. But it stung a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. It stung, it stung a little bit. It stung a little bit. But uh, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's, that's my G in the story. Oh, and another thing, my, my uh, if you if you remember 50's first album cover with we had the the. The suspenders and all that one of my best friend's aunts she's the one who's she put that outfit together for him she's a stylist tip the stylist shout out to the stylist <laughs> that's not really my genius story that's more like her genius story we'll be right back after this message from our sponsor all right and we're back after some time uh the chicken needs about another 20 minutes the rice is done look at that look at that look at that, look at that steam look at that the beans are working. I add a little bit more salt, a little bit more garlic powder, onion powder. I'm gonna take the cilantro out. And then I'm gonna add some other stuff, which is gonna be like, I'm, I'm, I kind of felt like I wanna have some kind of vegetable, right? So this dish kind of has like a built-in vegetable. Yeah, a couple of pieces of cilantro. We can leave those in there. Maybe, maybe not. All right, that's good enough. That vegetable, frozen spinach. All right, frozen spinach. I'm gonna throw this in there. That's obviously gonna change the flavor some. So we, we're, we're gonna adjust flavor as needed. And we're gonna dump this whole package in there. Looks like it's a lot, but it's really not. Yo, that rhymes. That's really hot. Freestyle off the top. That's what I got. Ah, bars. All right, anyway. gonna cook down we spoon some of the beans over it to help to melt some of that that spinach I don't know if you can hear that chicken but it's going I'm gonna check on it a little bit I checked on it a few minutes ago and I'm gonna see if maybe I need to maybe sprinkle some some of the drippings over the top to help it get a nice little crust I'm gonna show you what this looks like after I'm done gonna change the whole flavor profile of this dish in a good way and I may add some salt I 
And this could be eaten by itself. Like this, these beans and spinach, this is a dish in itself. And if you want, you could add, if you wanted to cook sausage in this, you could. You can cook shrimp in this. You can cook chicken and just make it like a one pot kind of deal. Most definitely. Ooh, shoot, my bad. I'm, I'm over here making a mess. Now a half a pack of spinach, that could work. But I'm extra, so, you know. We're gonna go the whole thing. We do the whole thing. Also, I just need extra space in my fridge, in my freezer too. So, raise the temperature up a little bit. Ooh -wee. Now you can almost say that this is spinach with beans in it instead of beans with spinach in it. This is also gonna add some liquid, obviously, just cause it's frozen. There's some ice in here. It's gonna increase the water content. Anyway, I'm gonna play around with this some more. I'll give you a quick shot of what it looks like. You can see it got a lot thicker. I do want this to be more soupy. So we're gonna play around with some of the liquid content in this, but for now, we're just gonna make sure that this, this big block of, of frozen spinach melts in there nicely. And you know, we'll, we'll adjust the seasoning as we, as we go. Be right back. All right, so uh, it's been about 40 minutes and we are going to check on this chicken. It's most likely done, let's, let's give it a look. Now, I'm trying not to get the camera too close to the chicken because last time I did that, it wasn't even that close, but I got grease all over the camera and all over the, the lens and all that. So enjoy the view from here. Now, let me see what I can get from the other side. All right, so this, this is what we're working with. Hopefully I don't get any grease on my lens. I'm gonna let that chill for a few minutes. This is what we're looking like with the, the spinach with the beans. I've added some salt to just mess around with the flavor but it's pretty much good to go. I'm gonna let that cook for a few more minutes. I'm gonna let the chicken just do its thing. But dinner's ready. That's that. Rice, rice has been ricing. And that's, that's it, that's it y'all. That's it, we got a full, full course meal over here. Like I said, I'm gonna let the chicken just woosah. Sometimes I'll put some foil over it, but I'm not this time, I'm gonna just let it do its thing. We gonna eat good in a little bit. Serve it up, I'll show you how it looks. Okay, so that's the beans. Can you see that? Can you see that? We're gonna add some rice on the top. Now you might be thinking, shouldn't the beans go over the rice? Like, yeah, you can, but no, you don't have to. I actually eat a lot more beans than I do rice. So that's what we're going with. And I'm gonna spoon some of the juice over here from the chicken over the rice. So let me, is this, uh, that's not that hot. We can, we, can, we can handle it. So we're gonna get some of this, this juice right here, this chicken gold, and we're gonna spoon it over the rice. Forgive my awkward arm placement. Spoon some over the chicken too. This is gold right here, this is gold. Cool, that's good. Maybe we can eat right now. Let me bring this up a little bit. So 
Sorry if I made you dizzy. But we got some rice, beans with the spinach. Rice, beans with the spinach with the chicken. Let me try the rice and the beans first. Mm. 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 Oh, that works. That works. Every day of the week, it works. Super hot, super good, super fulfilling. Get that, can I get that or shot? I don't know if it'll focus or not, but oh, I dropped a little bit, sorry. Mm. Tip, if you're on a date, don't make this. You can make the chicken, you can make the rice, don't make the beans. Definitely don't make the beans with the spinach. Just trust me, okay? Don't do that, don't do that. Chicken is fine, rice is fine, the spinach and the beans, if I need to explain why, you probably shouldn't be on that date. This chicken is dripping a bunch of juice. So we're gonna put that over the, over the rice. Mm. So oh, easy. 375 in the oven. Good seasoning. Lemon pepper obe. Easy weeknight dinner. This is one of those meals where you can feed a lot of people for a little bit of money. Cause you can buy, you know, like leg quarters for cheap. You know, a pack of leg quarters four or five bucks well at least where, I, where i'm at so i don't know where you're at but it's good stuff so let me wipe off the sweat because it's hot in here <laughs> about to turn the ac on but this is cooking jook Where we combine good food and good music. So I said earlier that I was thinking of possibly doing some some British British music. And I'm gonna stick to that. Let me pull up something I was listening to recently. I was listening to a group, I want to say from London, and they are called Hawk House. And the name of the song that I'm going to recommend is called Chill Pill. In parentheses, it says Experiment 2 Hawk House. I don't know if you can see that. Chill Pill Experiment 2. Maybe if I move my face, maybe if I, uh, if I do one of these. No, wait, hold up. That's right. Not too close. That record right there. Hawk House. It's called Chill Pill. Parenthesis Experiment 2. It's a dope record. That's my record I recommend for this meal. Listen to it. If you watch that on YouTube, tell them I sent you. Tell them Cooking Jook sent you. And uh, enjoy the record. Enjoy the food. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Cooking Jook. Appreciate you. Peace, 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 peace. Cooking Jook. Subscribe, like, share. Thanks for stopping by. Peace.